As is known, the first living organisms on Earth originated in water. Therefore, it was in the seas and oceans that after some time, the first predators appeared. And among them, in different eras, were the real masters of the underwater world. They belonged to different classes and families. Some of them even originated from land creatures that returned to the water. Today, we'll talk about the most interesting and largest aquatic creatures of different eras. Let's also try to figure out why they occupied the upper steps of the food pyramid. Subscribe to the Age of Dinosaurs channel. This will allow you to be the first to know when new videos are published. And with the help of your comments and likes, we can develop the channel further. Your activity also promotes the video in the site's recommendation system and allows as many people as possible to learn about our channel. Until a certain time, there was no division among animals into predators and herbivores. The Ediacaran period is sometimes even compared on this basis to the Biblical Paradise, where all animals lived in peace with each other. But by the beginning of the Cambrian period, the evolution had divided all the inhabitants of the ocean into hunters and their prey. And the largest predator known to us, without a doubt, was Anomalocaris. Its name means unusual shrimp. But in fact, this arthropod has nothing to do with modern shrimp. According to various estimates, the body length of Anomalocaris could range from 38 to 100 centimeters. Some researchers claim that they could even grow up to 2 meters. With the help of lateral lobes and a flat, wide tail, these predators could swim above the ocean floor in search of prey. To control such a complex swimming mechanism, a very developed brain was required for those times. Long frontal appendages that acted as jaws made it possible to grab smaller animals and move them into the oral cone. Also, this super predator of the Cambrian seas had very developed vision. Scientists estimate that their vision were 30 times more powerful than that of trilobites. Namely, they were most likely the main food of Anomalocaris, although they could well eat their smaller relatives. All these adaptations and large size made Anomalocaris the most formidable predator of its time. Judging by the remains found, these creatures lived almost over the globe. At the moment, only two species have been described, but there are suggestions that there were at least 10 of them. It's just that not all available remains have been fully studied yet. But after a few tens of millions of years, mollusks entered the race for the upper steps of the food pyramid, and such a creature as Camarasaurus managed to achieve serious results. This ancestor of modern squids and octopuses lived in conical shells up to 10 meters long. Hidden inside such a shell was a powerful beak capable of crushing the most durable shells. To capture prey, this monster used tentacles more than one meter long. Camarasaurus lived in the seas of the Ordovician period, approximately 446 to 470 million years ago. Their traces have been found in Europe and both American continents. It's believed that as the organism grew, these mollusks gradually completed their shell. The free space was filled with some kind of gas that helped maintain the buoyancy of this huge tower. This is exactly how the shell of nautiluses that have survived to this day are constructed. Such a mechanism didn't allow fast swimming and maneuvering. Therefore, it's assumed that Camarasaurus used ambush tactics. True, in recent years, more and more researchers have expressed the opinion that they were not predators at all. Based on some signs, it could be assumed that these mollusks fed exclusively on plankton, and they did not have a beak. Despite this, Camarasaurus can still be called the masters of the seas and oceans of their time. It's doubtful that there were animals at that time capable of actively hunting such armored giants. But simultaneously with mollusks, arthropods continued to develop in the seas and oceans of the Paleozoic. The most effective predators among them were crustacean scorpions. The first of them appeared in the Cambrian period, and in the period from 470 to 410 million years ago, they reached their peak. That is, for 100 million years, cancer scorpions reigned in all the seas of the planet. The largest of them grew more than two and a half meters in length. For such giants, everything that swam in the water and crawled along the bottom was easy prey. The body of the scorpion cancer was protected by powerful armor. Huge claws easily cut through the shells of other animals. At the same time, they were good swimmers. For this purpose, their hind limbs had a special shape. Later, only the smallest varieties remained, and even those moved to freshwater bodies of water. And after the Great Permian extinction, not a single crustacean scorpion remained on Earth. Only those of them who managed to move to land were lucky. They gave rise to all living arachnids. During the dominance of crustaceans, the ancestors of modern fish also suffered from them. 
but already in the Devonian period, it was fish that became the dominant creatures in all seas and oceans. And the most terrible monster of that time can be considered Dunkelosteus. This fish became the first megapredator among vertebrates. Even the sharks that had already appeared during the existence of Dunkelosteus could not compete with it for the title of Master of the Ocean. According to various estimates, their length ranged from 6 to 9 meters, and later studies showed that the largest specimen found was slightly more than 4 meters in length. It's quite difficult to reliably estimate the size of Dunkelosteus. Most of the found skeletons of this fish are barely a quarter preserved. Scientists mainly have their heads and jaws at their disposal. Dunkelosteus is a nathostome fish. In the seas of the Devonian period, the presence of full jaws in living creatures was very rare. Even in Dunkelosteus, there were two self-sharpening bone plates. This formidable predator also had no teeth at all. Therefore, it's believed that Dunkelosteus simply bit its prey in half. Only their larger relatives could pose a danger to these armored living torpedoes. Perhaps this predator used another interesting method of hunting. Research has shown that Dunkelosteus could open its terrible mouth in 20 milliseconds. This allowed him to draw in a large volume of water along with all living organisms at a terrible speed. Nowadays, some types of perch use a similar method. The fossilized remains of these fish are found in the USA, Canada, Morocco, Russia, and some European countries. Their age ranges from 358 to 382 million years. Currently, scientists have described about 10 species of these predatory fish. Only the Permian extinction put an end to their dominance in the seas. Together with Dunkelosteus, a huge number of representatives of marine fauna became extinct at the beginning of the Triassic period, and land dwellers began to take their place. Dinosaurs were just beginning to dominate there, and the lizards that moved into the water gave rise to a large number of diverse marine animals. Among these reptiles, there were many new rulers of the deep sea. Ichthyosaurs became the threat of the seas of the Triassic period. Some of them were adapted for fishing, others ate large animals, including their relatives. Among them, there were many real giants. One of these predators was the Thalatorchin. They lived in what are now the United States between 242 and 247 million years ago. Its length was about 8.5 meters. According to researchers, this ichthyosaur was one of the first Triassic creatures capable of feeding on prey of a similar size to itself. This style of feeding is commonly called macrophage feeding. The appearance of such predators just a few million years after the global extinction indicates the rapid restoration of the aquatic ecosystem. Another type of large ichthyosaur from the early Triassic period was Symbosphondylus. Their name was a combination of words meaning bull and vertebra. According to one version, it occurred due to the fact that miners in Nevada, where this lizard was discovered, used its vertebrae as plates. Different types of these sea lizards had a length from 4 to 10 meters but the largest species of Symbos fondalis grew up to even 17 meters. Their body was not yet fully adapted for swimming. The head of this predator could exceed one meter in length. The mouth had an elongated shape and was studded with small, sharp teeth. This made it possible to retain caught fish and shellfish, as well as grind the shells of various arthropods. But for swimming, Symbondospele used a long, flattened tail, like modern iguanas or sea snakes. These early ichthyosaurs had not yet developed normal caudal and dorsal fins. And in the Jurassic period, ideal marine predators appeared in the shallow seas. Plesiosaurs. This order includes more than a dozen families, divided into two groups. Fish-eating plesiosaurs had a long neck and a relatively small head. And the more versatile pliosaurs had a large mouth and a short, powerful neck. But among the representatives of both groups, there were quite large creatures. For example, it was previously believed that one of the largest pliosaurs, Liopleurodon, weighed up to 150 tons and grew up to 25 meters. Later studies showed that the largest plesiosaurids only grew to 13 meters in length. When swimming, they used four lateral flippers, like modern sea turtles. To test their capabilities, a special robot was even designed that used a similar method for swimming. As a result, it turned out that the simultaneous flapping of the fins allowed the lizards to develop greater speed and movements with different limbs allowed for quick maneuvers. It's noteworthy that Plesiosaurus, unlike their land and flying relatives, did not lay eggs. They were viviparous. This allowed them to not go to land and become more adapted to life in the water. The first Plesiosaurs appeared approximately 203 million years ago, and they went extinct along with the dinosaurs about 66 million years ago. 
Towards the end of the Cretaceous period, new contenders for the title of Masters of the Ocean appeared. These were Mosasaurs. At the moment, at least five species that belong to this family are known. These were large sea lizards with large skulls and powerful jaws. Their length ranged from 10 to 17 meters. The largest of them could weigh up to 15 tons. The remains of Mosasaurs have been found on all continents, including Antarctica. This indicates their distribution throughout all the oceans of the planet. Like other described aquatic reptiles, Mosasaurs descended from some land lizards. Their legs evolved into flippers. Moreover, the forelimbs were longer than the hind limbs. It's believed that these predators wriggled while swimming, like modern eels. Most Mosasaurs were adapted to feed on fish, but the larger ones could well have hunted plesiosaurs and their smaller relatives. Scientists have also found shells of ancient turtles with traces of teeth. Perhaps these marks were left by Mosasaurs. After the end of the era of dinosaurs and to this day, sharks and cetaceans compete for primacy in the seas and oceans. And if the first ones appeared in the Devonian period, then the second ones repeated the path of plesiosaurs, ichthyosaurs, and mosasaurs. The ancestors of whales were land mammals that lived in the coastal zone. Basilosaurus can be considered the most successful among ancient whales. Even though their name means royal lizard, basilosaurs were mammals. At first, the skeletons of these ancient cetaceans were mistaken for the remains of snake-like creatures. Their length was estimated at 30 meters. It's now believed that the largest basilosaurs grew only to 15 to 20 meters. At the same time, they were still larger in size than most aquatic inhabitants. Therefore, for several million years, basilosaurs were the dominant predators of the Earth's seas and oceans. Their fossilized remains are found in North America, the Middle East, and North Africa. These fossils are estimated to be 34 to 40 million years old. Essentially, basilosaurs are an intermediate link between land ungulates and modern whales. Their body acquired such enormous length due to elongated vertebrae, which may have been filled with fluid inside. It's believed that basilosaurs curved their bodies when swimming. Their hind limbs can only take two positions and could hardly help when moving in water. In terms of their internal structure, they are vestigial legs. Some scientists suggest that these limbs, up to 60 centimeters long, perform the same functions as those of modern boa constrictors. They're used to holding the partner during mating. In modern whales, these hind limbs are almost completely absent. The breathing hole in basilosaurs was located much closer to the head. As cetaceans evolved, it moved to the back. There's also considerable debate among scientists about whether basilosaurs could dive as deep as modern whales. It's believed that there's not enough space in their skull to accommodate sound location organs. Therefore, most likely they lived in the upper layers of water. The prey of basilosaurs included various types of fish and shellfish, as well as sharks, which were much smaller than these ancient whales. Despite that, sharks appeared about 400 million years ago. Since those times, they have not changed much in evolutionary terms. The size of these predatory cartilaginous fish changed mainly from era to era. They tried to compete with nathostomes in the Devonian period, lived next to the aquatic lizards of the Mesozoic, and hid from predatory basilosaurs at the junction of the Paleogene and Eocene. But 28 million years ago, a super predator appeared among sharks. We are, of course, talking about the Megalodon. This giant shark, according to some estimates, could be up to 20 meters long. Now, cetacean mammals have become easy prey for the Megalodon, but about two and a half million years ago, these giants went extinct. Perhaps the separation of the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans forced the whales to migrate to colder waters, and megalodons were adapted to life in warm water and were unable to follow their prey. This forced them to feed on their own young. Total cannibalism led to the rapid degeneration of these predators. There's also the opinion that they could not withstand competition with more organized killer whales or even their relatives, white sharks. Now these animals are the dominant predators of the world's oceans. Among the predatory cetaceans, one can recall sperm whales, and among sharks, the whale shark can be noted. Considering the maximum adaptability of sharks to life in water and the duration of their existence on the planet, it could be assumed that they will outlive both modern whales and people. Or perhaps some new predator will decide to follow the path of ancient lizards and whales, returning from land to the ocean, and then in the future, the seas and oceans of our planet will have new owners. We thank everyone who watched our episode all the way to the very end. If you like this video, we recommend you check out our other videos on the channel. They talk about the evolution of different species of living beings, problems of modern ecology, and human society.